Ron's here today, but well, Ronnie and Ron, Ron squared. Yeah, yeah, Ron squared. Back at the lab, uh, we built this engine for him almost like eight months ago now. Yeah, eight finished it ago. last year. 2.2 uh, liter build, billet crank, Ronnie's SPL 900 recipe. Our SPL 900 billet, basically. And uh, it's been it's been sick. It put down here in the heat on E85. It put down like. 730 to the wheel. This isn't a crazy build. I don't want wild numbers. Ronnie gave me wild numbers. I got bit. G30 is out. The G35 900 is in here now. So Garrett's Arrow, same housing size, just a bigger wheel inside. We're gonna see what we can get out of it today. Yep, so other than that, he hasn't really changed anything. He put an oil cooler on it, but he's just done maintenance and he's been Going ham with the car, which is exactly what we expected him to do. Yeah, yes, a little bit of Gymkhana grid, a little bit of racing some friends, a little bit of scaring people. And for on the those highway. of you that know how Ron drives, he drives his car as hard. <laughs> so what we're gonna do today is uh, we're gonna start like we would any other tune, even if it's a retune. We still have to figure out the part throttle fueling because it is a different compressor wheel, which means you know it's gonna operate in a different efficiency range, even in you know part. Especially in part boost and part throttle because it's going to be completely different characteristics. It's going to be close, but it's not going to be, you know, as close. So what we do is we turn off our closed loop tuning completely as far as uh, fueling control goes. And then we make all the adjustments manually and then we let the computer take over. But that's pretty much after we finish the tune where we let it, you know, add or subtract fuel if needed. Right now it's on the 85, um, you know, 800, 850 even, no problem. However, on the high setting, you know, the way Ron pushes the car, it's it only makes sense to go to a higher grade of fuel, which we have the Ignite Red E90, 114 octane, 90% ethanol. Yeah, we're gonna start with some part throttle pulse. Let's go. Quick pull, just to see where everything is. Just from looking from here, everything looks good, honestly. Oh, yeah. Everything. yeah. <laughs> this really cool thing you can do. It's called have over want. Uh -huh. That's how you get everything. In order to know what percentage change you need to make, to whether it's a VE table, uh, pulse width modulated fuel table, whatever the fact, whatever the case is, you take the number that you have, the have, you divide it by the want number, and that'll give you a percentage difference, and then you can apply that. Not bad at all. A little bit of wastegate dude. That's healthy. What are you gonna do with all that, dude? I, you know, honestly, it <laughs> just scares me every fucking time. What are we looking at here? Just some numbers. <laughs> just lines, so. numbers, graphs. <laughs> that is ridiculous. So this car was built for Gymkhana grid, first and foremost. Now, for those that don't know, that's like a timed course that's like rally and drifting together. Mm -hmm. uh, but in an all-wheel drive car, you A, need a lot of power, B, you need a lot of torque and power band. Uh, and I'd be racing against guys like Travis Pastrana in like a fully built, crazy race car. So I'm not as good as Travis, so my answer is more power. <laughs> Getting a build done is one thing, but developing it, and making sure everything works really well, fixing the things that break, improving things like heat management. That's all like what I'm doing mm -hmm. right now. That's why we have Ronnie, bro. That's right, <laughs> the, the mad scientist. <laughs> Dude, this thing is nuts, bro. The whole car is carbon fiber, and you're saying maybe it weighs like 28, 29? I think it's around 2,800 pounds, And yeah. his RS is already naturally lighter, huh? That's right. <laughs> Exploded everywhere, dude. It was just dumping straight to the floor. I don't even know what it was. Cooling, it looked green. Oh, yeah. Eater car hose. This completely off the block is still in there. Okay. But 
Chris told me to abort the pull, which I was already done with the pull anyway. <laughs> um, and he saw a bunch of coolant, and usually when you see that, it's the hose popping off due to head lift. This was at 33 PSI. We've ran over like 43 on this before. With less timing, and it's got our O-ring head. So we usually never see this unless it like detonates and lifts to a point that it tortures the head. So something was a little sus. So we let it cool down, we took a look at it. This heater core hose, the clamp was literally all the way back. So seems like it's been touched. Even though Ron doesn't think it's been touched, that's wild. So we're just gonna take this clamp off. We're just gonna put a normal hose clamp around it, a little bit more secure. I remember buying these at about 55 bucks for my Evo, and I know gas prices have went up. So. You were buying them at like 45, bro. Really? Yeah, you were that was like them. three, four years ago. What's it sitting at now? Right now, what I saw them for is like 80, 85. Oh. Dude, those 40 pound boxes just fell on my fucking head. <laughs> so sick. That's amusing, I, I huh? I like seeing you get hurt. I like hearing about it. <laughs> it was fun. I just look over and there's boxes raining on this man. Trim pot two. So you're making now the horsepower that you're making at your kill map. That's crazy. On trim pot two. That's crazy. Um, I'm just gonna look over some other things to make sure. Where it needs to be. Yeah, that's amazing because it's the same frame turbo, just a bigger wheel, a bigger inside exactly. wheel, and that's what yeah. it does. And so you did 630 on base, and then you did map 2, 720, and then we have the kill next. I guess so. I <laughs> guess so. It did yeah. 790 before. Uh, I'm gonna do one more on this one, on this revision, try to bring the torque up just a tiny bit more. <laughs> Special sauce. Special sauce. There you go, yeah. Like the special sauce I was using the other day that I made. <laughs> God damn. Dude, that spool sounds crazy on startup. Right off startup. Huh? <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Inner cooler piping. Yeah, which one? Down here. Uh, that one right there. Tony, yep. <laughs> can you give me a 11 on the electric ratchet? Oh. Oh. <laughs> Dude, that's a clean cut. It's a clean break, bro. Yeah. That's I did that. I that, this is <laughs> Dude, from the tune. Nice. Yeah, I, I wanted it at that angle. <laughs> Hitting this thing so hard the eddies are starting to twist up. I'm sorry, I'm still in my office. <laughs> so, real quickly, uh, here are the final numbers. All we did is we went from a G35, G30 G30 900, yep. To G35 900, which is a not slightly a dramatically bigger compressor wheel. Yeah, um, but the, the housing's the same. Housing's size. the same. Yeah. So is the turbine wheel. We have three settings. We have the gate setting, which is around sits around 27, 28 pounds of boost. Uh, we have trim setting number two, which is sitting around 35, 36 PSI. And then we have the kill map, which is at 43 PSI-ish. 43, 44, and then the tapers to like 41. Peak power that Ron made last time was 725 at around the same boost level. Yep. Now he made 805 at the That's same boost level. And it's the same correction factor. 
that's yeah, so with crazy. just the compressor now, wheel swap. ambient temp is a little lower. Ambient temp is a little bit lower, and which we're... automatically charge temp wise, it'll make more power, right. but the correction is no different. So yeah. it automatically does weather correction, but yes, it's, yeah. you know, oh, got you. That makes sense, gonna... yeah. the way he purposely built this is to kind of have very short gears and it's nice to be able to actually rev out. Yeah. Um, and Ron doesn't want to rev out all the way on the first two trim pop settings. So what we're going to do is we're probably going to lower it to 78. 78 would be good. 8,000 for the second one and then we'll yeah. leave the other one at 84. Because with the car sliding around and on yeah. grid, you know, going around an obstacle on the handbrake in competition, like you slap the rev limiter sometimes, you yes. know, or you need a bunch of just like that hang time to get to the next obstacle. So I would rather keep it at a safer RPM that you can bump up to a little bit. But look at how flat the torque curve is. I'm just talking, admiring the beauty of my work. <laughs> you gained 80 horsepower. You made 725 before. You made 806, eight, we'll call it 805 today. Mm -hmm. That's, if my math is mathing, that's 80 horsepower, right? 6,800 RPM and above. Uh, he made a substantial amount of more torque and he held that torque. But the most important thing to note is he made 80 more horsepower at basically the same boost and now he gets to rev out to eight grand is where we it stops making power. Safe eight grand. Safe eight grand. I mean, Crazy. we've zinged these to like 98. You're, you shouldn't do that on the team. <laughs> the important thing for me is like here in like the 3000 to like 4800 range is almost exactly the same. It's like right there. So there you go. when this the revs fall out, yeah, look at that. Yeah, see that's, when I'm bogging down, I say bogging, but when I'm, you're going around an obstacle and the revs fall a little bit, this is what I don't want to lose. And I lost nothing here. Once you get past this point, the wheel speed, it churns up. It doesn't really matter if you're down a little bit of torque here, yeah. but that power when you're getting off the line and doing that, you know, drag strip start, that's super important. You so. lost? At five grand is where like the substantial amount of losses down low. Yeah. You lost about 11 foot tons of torque. <laughs> this is where we're making peak torque now, about 6,800, right? Even though it's flat, I mean, you can say peak torque is at, you know, 58. You can, you can say that because, you know, it's, it's kind of flattening here. Realistically, like actual peak torque is at 6,500 RPM. Now, this is not something he's really gonna feel, but we're seeing it on the graph. Versus hitting peak torque at 5,600 RPM. So, you know, that seven, 800 RPM buffer, what that's gonna do is it's gonna keep your rods happy. Mm. Not only that, I actually have three degrees less time in that one. So just overall safer. Overall safer and more efficient. And more power. And more power. It's only gonna feel faster than before, if anything. Like you're not gonna notice any change. Which it already felt so insane. Exactly. <laughs> but but so with nuts. it being so short, yeah. this added power is gonna benefit you. So For sure. you lost a tiny bit of torque, yes. Are you gonna feel it? You probably would, a little bit. Yeah. But that peak power is gonna pin you back in the seat and yeah. keep it there. We might be close to MBT, but we're not 100% there yet. MBT's maximum timing for best torque or maximum brake torque. Mm. Uh, which is how much ignition timing advance you can have before you reach that plateau. On a 951 motor uh, with big cams and a setup like this, we're not really stressing it. We can shove another two degrees in there up top and keep that torque even more flat, but that's just stressing things. Knowing how yeah. you drive this car, I don't want to do that. <laughs> so, With that being said, hope this has been a educational episode. Hope you guys took something away from it. As always, comment, subscribe, like. Hit that damn bell notification so you guys see when I upload a video or Chris busts his ass and puts a video <laughs> out because this guy puts a lot of work in these videos. I appreciate you guys watching. I'm going to say goodbye and you punch out this time. Oh, shit. <laughs>